writing an answer and getting your inputs. So Adriana, here, Kaliroi has summarized the few topics and concerns which emerged from the last webinar, uh, in case you want to add something on those. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, as you know, uh, in, in the last seminar, we sent to you the inventory tool. What we want is that most con that everybody can put their information in the inventory tool. Now we thank uh, even Maurice Page. He did the translation in French. And now we have the electronic version the, the, and the, the Word version and the Excel version for whichever is available. So the idea is that you go and check if, if oxygen is available or not, if ventilators are available or not. But what we really want to know is not if they are available, but if they're functional. So are they really operating or not? Are you uh, missing uh, spare parts or they're not working? Also, we need to know if you have any complaints about any type of oxygen concentrator. Uh, if you have oxygen concentrators and they're not working or you have been receiving them as donations, we really need to know. So that is why we need the inventory. The inventory will fit into WHO. First of all, it will stay with you. So you as your, your um, organization, your hospital can stay with it and then be able to track uh, and see how, how many uh, items you have or not or when, when you're missing oxygen or other things. The second thing is it will inform the state or the national level. And then thirdly, it will inform uh, what needs to be purchased by uh, NGOs, by uh, donors and so to comply with the things that you need. But it also allows us to know which concentrators not to procure or not to buy or what are the main issues that you're having with them. So this is uh, the most important for the, um, um, the WHO inventory. This inventory tool will be merged with other facility, health facility assessment inventory. This will be coming up, we hope, in a week's time. And that will comply not only oxygen related issues, but many other issues. So uh, we will keep you informing on this and the way it, 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 uh, it changes. On the rapid virtu virtual training, what we would like to have is if any of you have done any training on ventilators, on the use of oxygen, the use of concentrators, if they are like generic trainings, to please send them to CED or send it to WHO, to my email or, or to CED. I prefer that you just post it in these um, seminars so that we can take it and then we can promote it and we can share it. Uh, there's a lot of Latin um, uh, trainings that could be done online that could be really uh, like steps approach very very helpful for people as you know trainers cannot uh, or not for training uh, on the use but also not to repair things most people cannot travel abroad so we really need to depend on electronic uh, systems to guide the repair and the use of the uh, of the all the technologies so we need uh, videos that are really like step-step approach, very simple with good slides uh, to train people aboard. And if you send them to, uh, to Tom, they can send it to us in WHO, we can upload them. And WHO is having the WHO Academy, which has apps that can be downloaded. So then we will see which ones can be put there. And now WHO is working to have some like uh, augmented reality and other kind of things. And they are done for free for WHO so that we can help in the promotion of training. So this is like a number one, both for uh, repair and for use, safe use. Um, I think uh, Tom, those were my um, most important. Ah, we, we have an issue too. Uh, for some countries, we've been asked to provide uh, PSA plants and others are for liquid oxygen. So what we would like to do is as soon as we receive a request from the country, we will try to contact our focal point or you as in the, in the Ministry of Health Biomedical Engineers so that you can help us find out more information about that provider. If you have any problems, if we can help on any way, because WHO will be buying um, or liquid oxygen installations and PSA plants, not only oxygen concentrators for low and middle income countries. So this is a, a very important topic. And the last mention on this point is there is called, um, it is called ACT and it is a big request for research and development. 
and it is basically for medicines and for vaccines and for diagnostics. But today, just today, there was a call by the uh, 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 NGOs asking the Director General of WHO to please include oxygen and all medical devices because they said that there's a lack of innovation in these parts and uh, we need to make them available for everybody. So I think uh, with this time, I think I covered the three topics. And if there are any questions uh, that anybody has on these topics, uh, please let us know. Adriana, how's the response been to the inventory so far? I know there's, it's now available online. Uh, there were like 10 that were sent uh, yesterday night. So I don't know, uh, I, I couldn't get uh, in hold with a uh, hold of Leslie before coming to this meeting. No, but we really need to encourage people to just keep sending them. And we can inform you, uh, Tom, and then maybe you can post uh, it for all the participants. Because we hope to begin that uh, you know, user experience network uh, feedback next week. Thank you. Okay, yes, thank you very much. So I think, um, any, anything else? Perhaps some questions on uh, the leftover from oxygen from Tuesday in our remaining few minutes. I'm trying to remember. Uh, some, something that is important is also we're getting innovations. So for the innovations, they have to go through the uh, call for the Compendium of Innovative Technologies so that then we can um, ensure that they are read and reviewed by our experts. But something that is very important, if there are innovations on oxygen supply, that could be readily available and they're commercially available, WHO is willing to procure them and to, to fund it so that then those innovations can go like uh, the free O2 and other things that I know uh, Australia and Uganda were working on that and others. So if we got, have good products that are innovative, WHO is willing to uh, support them. Over. Tom, I'm done. There were other questions about uh, helmet for ventilation and uh, non-invasive technology. So this is a good opportunity to remember that next week, the 12th of May, there will be another webinar all on these topics. So probably no need to anticipate any answer now, but rather an invitation for the attendees to follow the next seminars. And I just put the, the slide which reminds uh, the dates. And you can find all the information on the IFMB clinical engineering division uh, uh, website for registering and attending as you have done today. Okay, we have now really four minutes left. If anyone from the panel wanna just wrap up or summarize or um, say something to close this webinar. Yep, uh, I, can I just uh, inform someone about the uh, demand study, uh, the one that decontaminates respirators and masks. Um, if I can share the screen, I was trying to find it online, but I'm not sure if it's um, widely circulated yet or sitting somewhere. So uh, just to let you guys know, um, this is the demand study. It's uh, for the development of methods for mask and decontamination and 95 decontamination. Um, so someone asked uh, where it's being done. Um, can you see the, the PDF? Yes. Yep. Yes. Okay, perfect. So um, it's, it's, um, the study partners involve mostly American universities. We have a uh, University of Liège, Centex Bell, um, and many of the integrity labs that, that we currently use. Um, so this is uh, the study that um, hopefully in June or maybe before we can send some rapid um, findings just to confirm how the masks and um, respirators can be decontaminated in low resource settings, not with um, fancy VHP um, processes. So this is really the, the goal of demand. Thank you. Thank you, Jane. Thank you, very useful. And mm -hmm. then uh, Leandro, we, we did send overnight the questions. Uh, some were answered from earlier this week from the oxygen delivery town hall and some were not. Uh, now all of you have the questions and, and answers and, uh, and answers so far. P please contribute to those. Uh, you know, the, the panelists are nice people. We don't have all the answers to everything, but help us build answers and we'll try to, you know, build momentum over these town halls with more and more answers coming. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, I just want to thank you, you and the, the chairs and the participants today to help us disseminate all this uh, information uh, from WHO and uh, get feedback from all of you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Adriana, Busola, Stephen.
Anyone want to say something because we close? If not, we okay. Just, um, yeah, it's really been a good, um, a good seminar. I said, to, I, said, I said to add very quickly that we need to continue to encourage local innovations and provide very simple steps of minimum, minim, um, evaluating minimal quality for some of those locally produced um, PPE materials to be able to supplement the highly shortfalls that each country are receiving. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. This is uh, Bursala, then, then may comment. Go ahead, Bursala. No, I, I was just commenting that um, this has really been a good um, time to expand on all these issues. So I'm hoping that um, at least from our own side, the LMISs will be able to take up some of these issues and expand them at home and see what we can come up with. So just want to thank everyone for making time to be here. And as we wrap up also, this is Tom, we, uh, I've just put in the uh, chat the CED uh, COVID-19 Resource Center. Many of you are familiar with it. It continues to grow. We've actually added to it not only our, the best of the uh, reliable materials we found and put over the last month in our daily, uh, during the weekday daily hacking coronavirus uh, blog that comes out that's shared on all the social media. There's also, many of you are aware, there is a, a CED WhatsApp group that uh, you know is continuously uh, s sending ideas and solutions together and we're taking the information from that WhatsApp group that's really been going since early March so now over two months and solutions that we found there we're putting them on the CED website uh, resource center and even the questions from these town halls you know we'll continue to put them there in a way that you can easily find them and uh, contribute to them as you feel led but so we'll put more, you know, we'll build answers and solutions for you to be able to access readily. And thank you for all that. Thank you very much. I want to thank you all and just make one final comment that basically this pandemic has created the situation of limited resources for the very first well, very first time after decade is also in Europe, in the USA, in China, in countries which are considered to be high income. So we hope that we all learn this lesson that uh, we need solutions for low-income situations, which are not only common in uh, lower-income countries, but as this pandemic proved to be, are also relevant for Europe, USA, and normally high-income countries too. Therefore, we need to make an effort, as Adriana said, to produce innovation on medical device and PPE, taking into account limited resource settings, which are not just the problem of low-income countries, but it's a global problem. More than 70% of the global population is still treated in limited resource settings. That's a shame. That's a shame for all of us. Okay, thank you all for this wonderful webinar and uh, we look forward to meet you again the 12th of May. Thank you very much. Stay, uh, stay safe, use PPE. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Good day, everybody. Right. Let's keep our healthcare workers safe. Thank you.